Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today, we're going to be going over what's going to happen this month in Dragalia Lost. It is, of course, November, so it's the start of a new month, so they always do this every month. They release it this month in Dragalia Lost. We're going to be talking about the stuff mentioned in it, go over it, kind of give my thoughts and opinions on it. And if you want to give me your thoughts and opinions about it, you can leave a comment. And then when you're done commenting, if you like this video, you can leave a like and you can subscribe to me for more Jigalia stuff. So let's let's get into it. So uh, they start here telling, saying like, hey, everyone loved free summons the most from the second anniversary because yeah, duh, makes sense. And uh, there's a Gala banner currently going up, <clears throat> currently going up, currently going on with uh, Gala Poseidon and Gala, uh, not Gala, Lapis, just regular old Lapis who is the first mana caster. She may as well be a Gala because of how stupid hard it is for me to get mana casters. Hmm. I digress. But they say, yay, play the Phantom's Ransom because you get something that gives power to bow and mana caster wielding adventurers. So you'll, you'll power boost two mana casters. <laughs> Great. Um, also, if you see something special about the theme song, it's because Lapis and Karina are the ones singing it. They're Japanese VAs. So that's cool. Uh, plans for this month. So Opera, Karina, and the Dragon Giovanni will appear in the Phantom's Ransom event. It will also appear in the Summon Showcase starting uh, November 3rd at 10 p.m. That's right. Oh, man. I forgot. It resets early for me now. An hour earlier. Um... Okay, yeah, so we'll know their stats a little bit later on. I was expecting there to be three units in this banner, but after the most recent story chapter, it makes sense that there's only two, so. Don't know how, how crazy hard I'll go for it. I do like Karina a whole bunch in this whale. Look at this damn whale. It's so good. Um, Renee and Lenora are getting mana spirals. So this is the third time I'm recording this video because I could not, for the life of me, remember the other characters that were in their events so for lenora it was Silas, and for renee it was the uh it was ramona and renee her sisters the reason i was bringing that up is that one Silas got an extremely good mana spiral so i hope the same can happen to lenora for renee she would be the first of the sisters to get a mana spiral so hopefully that means that ramona and renee will get their mana spirals a little bit later on um I don't know if they need it. Fire's so stacked, but it's it's strange to think about like, oh yeah, they're not really in many fire team comps. But back in the day, Renee and uh, Ramona were used a whole bunch. So hopefully they can get mana spirals later on. These are two very weird units to just give mana spirals, but sure. It's because they're water. Makes sense. After the Phantom Ransom's family, uh, after the, the, the Phantom's family ransom, no. After the Phantom's Ransom facility event has ended, a defenses event will begin. The sages set in lands of the north. We'll have to wait and see who the actors are. Okay. That almost makes it seem like it's them. So that's going to be the next event after this. As announced in the most recent Dragalia Digest, Master Difficulty for Tartarus Wrath will be available starting 10, 10 p.m. November 10. Wish with the additional with the additional with this addition players will be able to challenge master difficulty at agito bosses of all five elements the new year's tidings a clawful cape parade event will return in mid-november you'll have a chance to add the event exclusive adventurers hana sabuba hana sabuba hanabusa <laughs> to your team if you haven't already i'm bad with japanese names Fans of this event will be happy to hear that the New Year's event will involve Hinamoto as well. If you're not familiar with Hinamoto's customs and culture, I encourage you to play for this cult for this uh, revival to learn more about your friends in the east of Elberia. I hope. I also wonder if that means they're also going to bring back the free multis with the um, the Lotto stuff in it, because that was also a part of New Year's. Um, it make a lot of people are like, this is really early for them to return it. I think it's better for a lot of reasons. One because Nobu, Nobunaga, Chichosi, um, and Mitsuhide are all limited units, and they're all going to be on this banner. Um, and the last thing you want for New Year's is to have multiple back-to-back -back limited banners. I really don't. F I also feel like, based off of the way they're currently doing things, that they were not going to get an actual rerun um, anytime soon um, near New Year's, because they've been so weird with limited units. It's the Halloween thing has really scared me. Has really made me go like, I don't know. It makes me 
want to save everything for Christmas because we have no idea if the Christmas units are going to be three days as well. And they're also limited. So, you know, something to think about for sure. I'm happy to have this event back. This cat's pretty good for Grace. Um, there are other units that could be used with the with Grace, but if you just want a free unit and not think about and not grind very hard, Ibisu will get you halfway there. Uh, I also like this event too. I like a lot of the characters in it. I wonder if the, any of them will get a mana spiral. I think Chitose is still used, but Mitohede has definitely fallen off a bit in light comps, as far as I can tell. Also announced in the most recent episode of Dragalia Digest, the legendary. The Legend difficulty for Valk's Wrath will be available on late November, as it is new highest difficulty taking on this quest will not be for the unprepared or the faint of heart, but since it's designed to be more of a test of progression rather than a, a means of progression, meaning that players will be able to really sink their teeth into it. What does that mean? Designed to be more of a test of progression rather than a means of progression. Oh, I, I get what they mean. That means that we're not going to get anything from it. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be hard, but that's only to test how hard uh, how hard you are, how strong you are. Please note that the interest of maintaining game balance, Legend Difficulty quests may only be undertaken by teams of certain elements. For Volk's Wrath, Legend, only teams of Flame to Tune Adventures may be used. That's... Wow. So you can't use Grace in it at all. I mean, I guess most people don't use Grace for... Master. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Sure. I I was trying to think of like, uh, that seems weird, but I'm thinking in terms of autoing. Maybe you won't be able to auto this at all and you'll have to actually fight it. <laughs> That's what it makes it sound like to me. Anyway, future updates. If you watch the latest Tregalia Digest, then you may remember mentioning an exciting news to be revealed early November. Well, you won't have to wait much longer as we'll be sharing further details soon. Stay tuned for in-game notifications of the official Twitter account. I really hope, I really hope this is the collab, but it don't, not to get my hopes up. The Worm Prince quality of life feature mentioned in last month's edition of this month's New Galia Lost will be added in the update in late November. I really wish that was early November. First, you'll be able to register a group of Worm Prince as a set, and you can easily swap uh, sets between adventurers. The optimized feature will now be tweaked so it does not exceed any ability values limits. Wow, when choosing an optimal warm print comp, that's crazy good. That's something that's been needed for a very long time. Uh, second, second, the sword feature will be revised to better match the specific effects that warm prints now possess. For example, you'll be able to easily identify warm prints with abilities that increase skill damage, sort warm prints of affinity, and view only warm prints of a particular affinity. Finally, the text entry will be added to the edit teams and treasure trade for worm print screens that allows you to directly input the name of a worm print. Wow, fucking finally! <laughs> or the ability to quickly find exactly what you're looking for. This has been needed for a very long time. That's good. That's all good, baby. I love to see it. The Fractured Futures and Forgotten Truths raid event will deeply connect it to the Heart of Dragalia Lost lore and play a vital role in explaining the overarching star given this importance we want to make sure that new players are not left out of the loop so we plan to make solo play versions of these quests for use in the event compendium huh that would be the first time an event that had raid bosses would be added to the compendium okay sure a new series of high difficulty bosses to succeed the agito is coming next year battles of the Battles in the Yagido Uprising incorporated a transformation mechanic in which the bosses began their fights as humans and transformed into something more powerful, into even more powerful beasts as the battle raged on. And the next series of bosses will be similar and include a never before seen mechanic designed to keep players on their toes. Starting at 10 p.m. November 3rd, the Albanian Battle Royale will be available, will be available from 10 p.m. on every Tuesday to 9.59 on every Thursday. This time players will transform to Cupid. Wait, what? This time players will transform to Cupid, a dragon with healing skill. Midgar Soma's powerful attacks have helped many a player claw their way to the victory, but now healing is available to all weapon types through this dragon. It is interesting to see the flow of combat change. Okay, so they're changing the main dragon. Okay. We plan to add additional elements to the Alberian Battle Royale and adjust the rewards, and that's cool. That's really cool. I wish more people actually gave Alberian Battle Royale a shot, as opposed to just 
dying. But, you know, can't force players to... With those rewards being as good as they are, you can't force people to just, I guess, play fair. You know, to be fair. And I guess it's better for Dragalia to give them the option to just kill themselves early and uh, get the rewards that way. We're giving all players the following items this month. 5,000 rupees, exquisite honey times 20, four leaf clovers times 10. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Cool. Mmm, I was kind of... I mean, this seems fine. Um, I like the news of those updates, but it really does feel kind of like a pretty slow month. At least for me, it feels like a pretty slow month. Um, which is good. I need to build up my supply of Warmite once again. Because God, God, God help me if they release a unit I actually badly want. I don't know if I'll be prepared. And the next remix, there's a good chance I won't need anyone from it, so... You know, just be calm and collected. That's my current plan. Uh, yeah, seems like a perfectly like stable month. Nothing too big. I can't wait for the end of the month for this stuff. The legend stuff, I'm also interested to see. Um, just to see what how they're going to handle, how hard is it going to be? Because people are really strong right now. So it would be really funny if it ended up being crazy, stupid, difficult. It'd be something else. But yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Tell me what you liked from this update. Do all that good stuff. Leave a like. Smash that like button. It always helps me out. It always makes my heart good. Makes me feel good. Um, all that other good stuff. And you can subscribe to me for some more stuff. And until next time, everyone, you guys have a good day and a good night. And I'll see you guys in another video. Goodbye. I need an outro. Ah, oh, shit. I didn't hit stop record. <laughs> I'm dying.